Tonight, we're absolutely delighted to be joined by Dr. Patrick Tracy, author of this book, Behind the Mask. It's a great read. Um, Dr. Tracy, can we talk about what is an incredibly storied career, one of the most bizarre career stories that you're ever going to hear, and um, not the kind of thing that com you come across day to day when, when you're studying here at UCD. Uh, I'd just like to give Dr. Tracy a real strong round of applause for being so kind of his time tonight. Thank you very much indeed to UCD for inviting me here, medical faculty. Even though I'm ex-RCSI and I see some of my old colleagues in the class, and um, I did my dermatology here, so I have that connection. Nelson Mandela once said, you don't know where you're going to until you know where you're coming from. And I grew up in this area of Northern Ireland, just on the border uh, of Fermanagh, Donegal and Leitrim. And it was um, a picturesque little village. And if you read the bottom, these are just statements from my book, so I probably don't have to introduce them. And I'll run the, the lecture into three series, I suppose. First, living on the border was quite a contentious thing even before the war in Northern Ireland started. So uh, Enniskill and Derry, um, even in the time of King William of Orange, obviously were um, battle towns to an extent. And where I grew up, Garrison, was due to a barracks that was built in that area by King William of Orange on his way to the Battle of Boyne. Those, when I was young, I went to St Michael's. I was winning awards at quite a young age. I won the British Amateur Young Scientist of the Year and the Aer Lingus when I was still 15 and 16. And you're probably too young to remember Magnus Pike, who was a television series at the time. I produced a project that at the time I didn't know how important it could be, but Magnus Pike at the same time turned around and told me that um, the project was ahead of its time. And it was an interesting thing. The, the, the award was given to me by Harold Wilson, and that was also just before, I suppose, <clears throat> Northern Ireland kicked off. I, I sort of didn't really know at the time, but what I had was, I suppose, if you look at this bottom picture here, I didn't have enough science to realise that we were just modulating, but that won the prize at the time. And the interesting thing was that 10 years later, the same principle was used in the CD player, that the binary code was reflected on, which is the same as my moving concave sphere, with, I suppose, the laser running across it and being picked up. So at the time, Harold Wilson gave me an award. <laughs> then I went to Belfast. <clears throat> And um, a lot of students were taken out, hung, shot, killed in that period. <clears throat> I knew at least two or three. <clears throat> This was also the time of the Shankill Butchers, of course, who um, cut 23 people's necks, including students. And the village where they operated on was only across the road from us in the Queen's Elms. Um, so I went to the Royal College of Surgeons. And the Royal College of Surgeons, I suppose, in that period was one third Irish, one third um, foreigners, and one third um, people who were from the third world. We mean foreigners, other parts of Europe. This is Norwegian Independence Day, 1979-1980, um, and this is me dissecting a rat before one of our exams. In that year, it was easy for me because I had already a degree from Queen's Belfast, and I suppose we spent a lot of our time just hanging out in the Bailey, Davy Burns, Lilies, Reynards, Pink Elephant. Those were good days in Dublin. And I got to know, I suppose, the lads in YouTube quite well, went drinking with them on many occasions, and we remained that friendship right through until the present day. This is Bono and I at the Global Leadership Awards, the United Nations in New York, 
in 2003, he gave that award to Alex Ticatino. Uh, he was head of TASO, which is the oversized um, agency for HIV. And at the time, I was working a lot on HIV patients. I'll go into in a moment why. And um, I had written some papers and the world was coming to Dublin to get treated for HIV at the time because the hospitals had no, uh, that's the aesthetic end of it, HIV lipodystrophy. And at the time we didn't know whether people had these skeletal faces because of the drugs, the perioxide radicals, the antiretroviral drugs, or whether just people were living that long that it was happening like this. A lot of people believed it was just a third stage of AIDS. I didn't. I believed it was the drugs that were causing the problem. And there were many reasons for that. They ended up with big buffalo humps on their back. Their faces were so skeletal, they became suicidal. And this is a patient I treated in the United States. This is the first patient treated in the United States with bioalchemid. He was a 71-year-old um, Jewish patient. And um, he was gay, and he hadn't been outside his apartment for four years. In those years in college, I had won many medals, including the Norman Ray gold medal in biochemistry. 